Hi, everyone, and welcome. Greetings to you this beautiful day. And uh, I, I'm Janet Harley, your host of Faith in an Ever-Changing World, Encouragement and Hope, Faith Story. And it is my pleasure to have with me today Kay Cordell. Now, you, there's uh, on the post, you'll be able to read a, a, a lot of information about her. But uh, I just do, do want to mention that uh, she is, has been a minister for 56 years, a teacher, college instructor, and house builder since 1971. Wow. This uh, woman has um, done great accomplishments in her life, but oh boy, she uh, her growing up years were tough. Uh, were very, very hard. And uh, so she is going to share her faith story, finding God in the midst of incest and sexual abuse as a little girl. And um, so right after this, thank you, Kay, for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Janet. Yes, ma'am. I appreciate it. Yes. And when we return, uh, we will hear um, Kay's faith story. We'll be right back. And welcome back. Uh, uh, Kay has written, uh, as you see, like 15 books and, and she's working on more. But one of them is Red Bird Phoenix, which is about her life. There it is. And uh, you can certainly find it on Amazon. And uh, so uh, and she's written a screenplay as well uh, for it. Um, OK, Kay, if you will, please share your faith story with us. I'd like to start out by encouraging anyone that's listening. If my story brings up too rough of memories, uh, don't feel bad if you have to withdraw from the broadcast. But mm. I was born into a family of incest in the hills of Arkansas up in Madison County. And mm. I can't ever, I cannot ever remember not being badly touched by my family. And uh, it was a long, hard, difficult road, mm -hmm. acknowledging and understanding what abuse is. Yeah. And at 11 years old, I was able to find Jesus. Mm -hmm. And when I found Jesus, I found a power source that I could connect in and survive. He's, mm -hmm. uh, the Lord has been my main frame of reference all my life. Uh, I was blessed to have godly grandparents who were ministers and, and because of them today and their love that they showed me in the midst of all of this violence, I was able to find the Lord and to walk with the Lord. And in times of abuse occurring, the Lord would let a red bird come and sit on my shoulder or in the window. And I'd focus on that red bird, which I understand now as a grown up, it was a symbol of the Holy Spirit that a child could understand. Wow. And the Lord helped me in those times, Janet. Oh, that is wonderful. And so he uh, was speaking to you even at an early age. Yes. I knew I was a sinner by age seven. And I didn't know I didn't know what to do. I we'd often go into a church. Uh religion was used to harm us children. We were abused in the name of God, but it was oh, not God. It was oh, not goodness. Jesus uh, who right. they were using. They used that. They would beat us. And if we did something wrong, they would beat us, said we were doing bad against God. But out of that, I knew it was not, God didn't have anything to do, Janet, with what was happening to me. Right. And that's what right. I hope the viewers will understand today, that if you're in a domestic violence or you're, you're in an abuse situation sexually, if you're even a you know small child, you need mm. to tell your teacher, uh, the school counselor or the school mm. security office, shake their hand until they grasp yours and understand you're trying to tell them what's happening to you. Right. God right. sees you. 
He's holding you when the abuse is happening. I like to picture God is holding the victim in his arms, lying beneath her or him mm. while they're being abused and begging the abuser to stop. Oh. Abuse is a choice. Abuse is a, from the abuser is a matter of choice, Janet. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a matter, it's something they do for power, control, and manipulation. It has nothing to do with pleasure. And it's a, a generational uh, thing. I went back in my family and done research and abuse has been on both my father's side and my mother six generations back. Oh and it's a continual goodness. thing that is, goes forward. If we as the abused or the victim don't step forward and name our perpetrator. Right. Uh, naming the perpetrator takes the power out of their hands and puts it in ours and into the court system and into uh, for law enforcement. Mm -hmm. And the sad mm -hmm. thing is churches need to be educated, uh, Janet, so that they can recognize if someone in the church is harming a child. Sure. And in the ministry, I encountered attempts to abuse me for many years as a young minister and I thought something was wrong with me and I want to reiterate mm -hmm. there is absolutely no fault of any child man or woman who's been uh, sexually abused it is the perpetrator's fault it is not right. our fault at all we're right. the scapegoat yes and God, God's love is his love for us because we've been abused is again, God has nothing to do with our abuse. No, and he's not about God, that. No, I've encountered so many victims who are angry at God. Mm. But I'm here to say God's love is the purity of our heart. Absolutely. And I'd like to encourage you. I'd like to encourage each victim to hear what I'm saying right now. If you've been abused, you can be spiritually made clean through prayer and uh, I've got a program in my book when forgiveness isn't enough for church leaders to use. And it would go step by step to restoring what I call spiritual virginity, the right yeah. to feel clean from the dirtiness of abuse. Mm -hmm. And that is so important and vital. Once the victim sees that, once I Absolutely. realize that, yeah. healing hit me like a bucket of water, Janet. It just went mm -hmm. all over me. And I thought, mm. I can be clean from all that feeling of being dirty. Yeah. And it is a dirty secret. Yeah. And little children are told that they'll be, their parents will be killed or their favorite pet or that uh, they no, their parents won't want them. That's mm. all a lie. That's mm. a lie from the perpetrator. Mm. So uh, it's just, we want you to know there is freedom in asking God to heal you. And I'll say this in my counseling book, I teach the victim does not have to forgive the perpetrator because it is a sin against the very holy nature of God. At the Garden of Eden, when God breath, breathed life into mankind, he put a holiness in us that no one was to touch us, that we have a choice about sex. And that choice is we choose in marriage or we choose, you know, if we go in the route of choosing to give ourselves to a boyfriend or girlfriend, uh, these are things that it's, I, I can say it's not approved of God, but it's something that God will forgive. But when a perpetrator forces his body on a child or older person, that is a choice that God says, no, you don't do that. It's wrong. You've offended me. Mm. And that offense against God is what we are not understanding. Mm -hmm. But there is healing for the victim. And all she has to do is forgive herself and ask God to take care of the perpetrator. That's the dividing point. Mm -hmm. Once you ask God to take care of the perpetrator, you let go and let your anger be healed by God and God's mm -hmm. going to see the perpetrator is punished here or in eternity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, Janet, do you have any question you'd like to ask? 
Well, uh, you know, we, we have had a chance to talk uh, prior to uh, this. I think uh, we chatted uh, one, one day last week. But yes. um, now you are, you said that you have a screenplay. Uh, yes, I have and, a script written and okay. on Redbird Phoenix, and I have a producer signed on. What we're okay. looking for is uh, we're looking for a director and a company a that would like okay. to pick up the rights to the screenplay and to make it. The screenplay is absolutely fantastic, and uh, I, you would enjoy it. It will bring out exactly how the Lord led me from a small child to I was 18 and what God did in between. Uh, the Lord has mm. really inspired the script. It's uh, it'll be. It's just not a. Re it's not a religious script. It is a script of survival of how God uh -huh. helped me survive and escape. Mm. And That's I left wonderful. home at eighteen and got away. But I'll share a little tidbit here. It took me years to write this book, Janet. I just knew my parents I'm and all sure. these yes. you, me, mm. were outside the door watching me write the book. Yeah. And I would have nightmares. And, but once I got the book done, it was so freeing because I yeah. named names in the book yes. of who truth abused me. Yeah. Yes. The Absolutely. truth does. Yes. yes. And, uh, Fear is what the perpetrator uses to keep us from telling. It may you may be abused right now by an uncle, a babysitter, a church deacon, a pastor, your father, your grandfather, or a stranger. Mm. Uh, all what they tell you is a lie. They yeah. don't own you. They have no right to your body, and they have no, no excuse for anything they're telling you when they're hurting you. And God wants them to stop. It is not his will, but we have yeah. to remember man has free will and free choice. And again, you Absolutely. need to pick up. And I say what I tell myself, I said, you need to get up on your feet, pull up your big girl <laughs> panties and do something <laughs> about your past and don't let the past on you. And so yes. I made that choice and the growth. I Go ahead. Yes, I, I remember uh, you're you're saying uh, violence uh, does not define my salvation, but has spurred me forward to tell my story, so others might tell of their abuse and find healing. Yes, that's beautiful. That's the entire existence. Uh, my goal, if I am blessed, I would love to testify in front of Congress to get a domestic violence uh, constitutional amendment. We are mm. desperately in need in, that, in this country. Every 68 seconds while we're here on this program, Janet, someone is being raped in this country. Mm. And Arkansas is the second highest state with rapes victims in the nation. Mm. And my voice... I want my voice out there saying to every adult, your children, your grandchildren, you and the future do not deserve to be disrupted by rape. Uh, mm. Rape survivors, we live with the guilt till we die. Uh, yeah. But I'm telling you, I've come to a place, I don't feel guilty anymore. I didn't do anything wrong. And yeah. that, exactly. if we can help to understand that, yeah. violence... Yeah. As you said, it does not define me. In fact, it's been a platform from which I have walked from and preached from and learned for myself that the love of God is so much stronger and so much purer than yeah. abuse that I can live a happy life. I go to yeah. bed uh, many, most nights now and never have bad dreams. Now, Good. I did suffer from PTSD. I was suicidal. And I had to mm -hmm. seek help. If you're suicidal, uh, the past, you have flashbacks or you get uh, upset, upset, smells may upset you. You need right. to seek out a counselor. Uh, I stayed in counseling 20 years. I do do counseling now in my community and work with domestic violence mm -hmm. victims and children who've been raped. I find attorneys yeah. that will take their cases. Uh, I work with them through court. Uh, my mm -hmm. counseling book is used by law firms. If you're a lawyer out there, I will uh, 
sign over the rights to use my book free for your uh, victims that you're representing and right. wanting to win for. Uh, we've won several cases against deacons and preachers in church with the book. And God gave gifted me to write the book. It, mm -hmm. uh, and I did my thesis uh, for some of my degrees at Boise State University. And my professor told me, he begged me to write a book. So I did it. And I've got the second one started, Janet. Well, looking, good. I want to get okay. farther. Uh, I want to understand why people who've been abused are uh, soldiers, you know, our armed forces, why that when they suffer PTSD and they have this disassociation, why they can't right. read the Bible. And this is something I'm researching, working on now. Oh, my but the goodness. Script, <clears throat> if we can get the script made, it open doors. And I'm praying for God to open those doors, Janet. Great. Well, we'll all pray with you for that, Kay. And and thank you for being such a uh, an advocate uh, for the uh, for fo for folks that are abused or have been abused and are being abused. Uh, and uh, but I know that the Lord is going to open uh, other opportunities for you to be an advocate for them. And I'll um, go and speak. Uh, I tell people pay for my food, airfare, and uh, I'll come and speak. I've been I've spoken on army bases. I uh -huh. try to address issues of uh, what we mm -hmm. as victims have to understand. We have PTSD. We have to understand and gain resilience and mm -hmm. look at suicide. Mm -hmm. Those mm -hmm. are the three things that haunt uh, domestic violence and sexually abused uh, persons. Right. Right. Okay. Then, now I have, are, you able to have, are you able to have questions from the audience? Well, um, I don't see any comments uh, right now, but uh, what we, uh, what I have done, Kay, is I have already put your website in the comment section yes. on my Facebook page and on YouTube. Uh, and I will add it to my timeline um, uh, after the broadcast. So, yes. uh, and I'll also share this uh, with you so that uh, this broadcast so that it, it can be on your timeline and uh, so that people can see. But uh, thank you again, Kay, for joining me today, for sharing uh, your story, uh, being willing to do that. And uh, I want to thank everyone for watching. If you do have questions, please contact Kay. She is on Facebook. And she does have the website, so uh, you can certainly get in touch with her uh, if you'd like for her to come speak or if you just have questions for her. I also yes, want to say, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> all the information is on the website to contact me. Good, good. Absolutely. That's great. Uh, I also wanted to thank uh, Creative Motion Network uh, for those folks that are watching a great uh, a network, family network that I'm a part of and proud to be. Have faith and look up, friends, where our help comes from. Thank yeah. you again for joining me today. Bye. God bless. Thank you, Janet.